What's cracking, big dogs? Welcome, bike to the headquarters. Welcome, bike to big dogs. Got to eat fancy football. I am Nicholas, and we have kicked off a mock draft. Things are kind of flying already, as you can see. We're on the sleeper app. My man uh, Adam Pfeiffer invited me to do a mock draft with him today. We are filming this on Friday, May first. Welcome to May. Just another month in paradise. We are filming this on Friday. This will probably be released either Monday or Tuesday. I'm not exactly sure yet, um, but he was doing an article and he wanted to get a, a bunch of people together to, to mock draft. So I said, sure, Adam, I will come and I will hang out with you and I will destroy your friends in a fucking mock draft. So here we are. It is a 12 team. This is post NFL draft, obviously. So they include the rookies. This is full PPR, I believe, and I want to say it's one quarterback as well. Probably should have figured out the rules, but we will figure them out very quickly uh, whether or not someone takes a quarterback in the first round. If they don't, then we're doing one quarterback. I believe it's one quarterback, full PPR. I am drafting from the 11 spot. Drafting from the 11 spot, and uh, we got to choose our spots. I figured I'd, I'd fuck around and, and go somewhere late in the draft because I don't think I've done any mocks from the 11 spot. And most of the mocks you've seen me do on my channel have been best ball drafts. So you're not necessarily constructing an entire roster. What you're doing is picking the best players available because the software will you know, start the best guys for you. Here we go, Jude Duards, like my guy. You know we're kicking off at 1 p.m. and you're going to sit here for the entire two minutes. I, I, was, I was debating whether or not I wanted to record this, but I figured out, you know, fuck it, we're in quarantine. The more content, the better, I guess, right? Since this is just a regular mock draft, you, you guys will get to hear or see more of a, uh, a team building strategy from me as opposed to what we're doing in the best ball drafts, picking best player available again, because they just start the best guys in that type of software. What I'm seeing so far trend-wise is exactly what you've already kind of seen. And that is running backs are going off. Oh, boy. So Sleeper's ADP has... I wonder why I went Julio Jones there. I don't even think that was the next guy up. But Sleeper's ADP has some funky stuff going on. So we'll see a lot of running backs go off the board quickly. So we've seen C-Mac, Saquon, Michael Thomas, Dalvin Cook, Alvin Kamara, Julio, D-Hop, Zeke. Now, this, again, is a full PPR, let me remind you. So I'm coming up on the clock, and I know... Oh, Adam's before me. I know he loves Mixon. I know he loves Adams. I'm curious as to which one he leans with i would really actually like to start up with adams here in a full ppr league ah good 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 choice good choice puts me in a little bit of a pickle to be honest with you i don't love any of the players left on the board uh nick chubb joe mixon fournette josh jacobs Aaron Jones, Henry, they all have their question marks when it comes to the passing game. Fournette, I know, caught a lot, but I don't expect that to come a lot this year. Chubb will be uh, competing with Kareem Hunt, Joe Mixon. You know, as much as we like the talent of him as a pass catcher, when is that actually going to come to fruition? This is year four, and we haven't seen it. We've only seen him, you know, start to dive even lower with the target numbers and shit. So I'm nervous. Uh, Josh Jacobs, I mean, they're listing Lynn Bowden as a running back, which is nerve wracking if you are going to be taking Josh Jacobs in, in a full PPR league. I like him in half PPR. I like him in standard, but I like him a lot less in full PPR. So let's look at the wide receivers left. I, yeah, let me grab uh, Antonio Brown. I'm full PPR. Yeah, I'm probably not ready to pull the trigger on Chris Godwin. I think I'm actually going to do something that's going to be surprising to you guys, uh, especially after that whole spiel I just let out. So Derrick Henry, I'm going to go with here. Derrick Henry, Derrick Henry. And I guess let me see what I Am Legend does and then see where I end up. And then I'll explain my picks after. So we have Nick Chubb right after Derrick Henry at the 112. And he comes back on the turn. He took Chubb and Mixon, probably the two guys that I was actually going to go with there. Now, I know a lot of you guys are really going to like Godwin here. Uh, I think it's still too early for me, given the fact that it's the new quarterback, man. It still makes me a little bit nervous. If Cooper didn't have CeeDee Lamb there, maybe I'd think about it, but probably too early. I don't really see any value here with I don't see any value here with the wide receivers if you don't gra grab one of these top guys, especially in full PPR. So I'm probably going to go back to the well on running backs, and there are not a lot of guys that I love here. Though, you know what? You know what? Here's what we're going to do. I forgot they got rookies down here. So if we're taking this as realistic as possible, I'm going to draft my boy Clyde Edwards-Hilaire. This is a full PPR league. Totally forgot about that. So paired up with Derrick Henry. Here's my thinking with Derrick Henry. I will be doing my running back rankings videos next week. We're going to break it down into the top six and then probably the top 12. I got to hide this chat because it's fucking me up right now. 
Top six and then top 12. I was sitting there and wondering, great pick, Pfeiffer, with the with the two, three. I probably should have looked at Sanders there. I might have Sanders ranked over CEH in, in redraft leagues. I'm getting to running back six, right? You got C-Max, Saquon, Dalvin Cook, Kamara, Zeke, whatever order you want to. And then you get to running back six, and you're like, hmm, who do I put there? And I ultimately decided on Derrick Henry. I think he's just, I mean, they showed you what they want to do there, man. There's no question about it. it everything revolves around Derrick Henry. I don't give a fuck. We're playing in redraft. I don't give a fuck about his franchise tag. I don't care about his contract extension. You know damn well they're giving him the ball 350 times this year. I don't care if you're in PPR. I don't care if you're in standard. I don't care if you're in fucking 32 PPR. Maybe I'll care a little bit in that one. But point being is Derrick Henry is just going to get a shitload of carries. And Derrick Henry is going to be a good fantasy producer. At the end of the day, the picks that you take in the first few rounds, the first round pick, your second round pick, your third and fourth, are going to be the anchor of your team. They're going to be the guys that put up the, the core number of points for your team week in and week out. And you have to make sure that they are there. You have to make sure that they are doing their job and getting you the points week in and week out. So yes, Derrick Henry, not as great of a PPR option but still a good fantasy player. And you just want good fantasy players on your team with high upside, man. He led the league in rushing last year. There's no reason that he can't do it again. So I paired him with Clyde Edwards Hilaire here. Full PPR. I mean, we we already know. You guys have listened to me all week talk about how Clyde Edwards Hilaire is going to be a PPR monster. They compared him to Brian Westbrook. Brian Westbrook got like seven to eight targets a game while he was under Andy Reid in Philadelphia. Uh, I expect a lot of the same usage and there were reports coming out, which did make me hesitate a little bit, you know, saying that Damian Williams is the starter, you know, and CEH is going to work in. I have to be unbiased here because if that came out about someone else, that did come out about Jonathan Taylor, right? It was like Marlon Mack is still here and he's still going to get a lot of carries. Uh, I think that to be the case. I am not really sure what to take here um, because they said it all offseason about Damian Williams being a starter last year. And then Andy Reid was like, yeah, we're going to we're going we're gonna to work it into a committee. And Damian Williams was the guy as long as he was healthy. I'd imagine maybe it'll be a split backfield for carries, but I would I think Clyde Edwards is going to get a shit ton of passing work. So I'm absolutely fine going with him here as uh, in, in, a, in a full PPR league. If this was half PPR, I probably would have leaned more towards Miles Sanders because I think the workload floor is a little bit higher and there's no one else in Philadelphia there. So we have Henry and Clyde. I think it, I, Henry and Clyde sounds like a great fucking villain nickname duo. The new Bonnie and Clyde, the new age Bonnie and Clyde, Henry and Clyde are my RB1 and my RB2. One is a standard stud. One's going to be a PPR stud. So I'm, I'm happy with the pairing and going back to the entire trend thing. You see, what are we? How many picks are we in right now? We're 12. We're about 18 picks in or 19 picks in. And you could see at least half the board is running backs. 12 of the first like 19 are running backs. And this is a, a, a big trend we're already seeing, which is why I'm just going to fade the wide receiver for the most part in the early rounds, because there's so much value from rounds like three, four, five, six into the wide receiver position. But if you miss out on the top tier running backs, you're probably going to be hurting a little bit uh, later on, because, you know, once you get to the fifth or sixth round, you don't have like starting running backs sitting around. Whereas for wide receivers, because teams obviously start three wide receivers on the field, you always have options to choose. So I end up typically going very heavy on my running back position early on and then looking for my wide receivers or my tight ends unless someone drops to like extreme value like obviously if Michael Thomas dropped to the 111 or I probably would have taken Devonta Adams there and hope Derrick Henry got back to me at the 2-2 but there's a time and place for most of those things like for instance Devonta Adams I'm, I'm very surprised he went after Tyreek Hill I'm surprised he went after all those guys but I'm assuming the six and seven might have been auto drafts Tyreek Hill Devontae Adams Tyreek Hill is obviously he's my wide receiver two and half PPR but I think Adams the fact that they just added no wide receiver depth in Green Bay means Adams is going to absolutely dominate in 2020 from a volume perspective someone tweeted out I, I couldn't find the tweet before we kicked this off but someone tweeted out Devontae Adams's numbers in terms of like the share over the last half of the year when he came back and healthy, it was like target share was like 35%. Red zone share was like 50%. Touchdown share was up to like 50% too. Some absurd numbers. And if he didn't deal with that high ankle sprain last year, Devontae Adams would have had a, a huge, 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 huge year. All right. So we've I see some fucking huge problems on the board right now. Aaron Jones at the 2-8. You have to be a little bit nervous with A.J. Dillon coming in. Um, I mean, Aaron Jones is still going to be the guy, but they're telling you something a little bit different there. Melvin Gordon, 210, way too high for me. Um, he's going to be in a committee with Philip Lindsay for sure. I mean, he's not even that efficient of a running back. He's not really that good of a running back. 
were kind of unclear on what his role was. So I'm not I'm not in love with that pick, especially in full PPR. Um, this is an offense that I don't know if they're going to pass the running backs too much. Todd Gurley at three two. I mean, he was a winner from the draft, but they already came out and said that they want to they want this to be a timeshare in Atlanta. I I don't have faith in Todd Gurley being a, a big PPR player this year. Same thing with Chris Carson. Uh, I mean, I guess he's a winner. I like I like that kid, TJ Dallas, that they drafted in the fourth round this year. Carson's coming off an injury who's supposedly going to be ready by week one. Anytime we start hearing the he should be ready by week one rumors this early, that means that they have long term, that, that, that the timetable is all the way up to week one. Like there's long term concerns with the injury. If they can't tell you for sure that he's going to be ready seven months from now, that means he's dealing with a very fucking serious injury, of course. So uh, Carson makes me nervous because he's always injured. So is uh, Rashad Penny, who's probably going to start the year on the pup list. So he's kind of out of my, um, he's off all, basically all these running backs up here that we're taking, Gordon, Gurley, Carson, I'd probably look at Fournette in the third round, but those guys are off my board anywhere before the fourth round for sure. Probably not even until like the fifth round as picks. Things start getting really interesting because the wide receiver depth is so, is so real, right? Like you look at the running backs that are left here. Devonta Freeman, uh, see, these are from last year, huh? Fuck, they didn't really update the ADPs. Devonta Freeman, Le'Veon Bell, Devin Singletary. I mean, a lot of these guys are still pretty highly drafted this year. These are guys that you don't want to anchor your, anchor your team with, right? You don't have to want to depend on carry on Le'Veon Bell, James Conner, David Montgomery, though I think James Conner is now a, a really good value given the fact that they didn't take a back and still McFarland in, in the fourth round. But the point remains, you know, when you have those guys that you're unsure about, but you still have guys like Amari Cooper, Cooper Cup, Adam Thielen, Allen Robinson left all the way down here in the third, fourth, and fifth. Like I'm, I'm going to be able to get guys like Diggs and uh, Robert Woods and Christian Kirk and Terry McLaurin all the way down here in the sixth feel way better about stockpiling running backs early on if there was anyone that I thought was still of good value I would probably take him here I think this is probably the time to start looking at Jonathan Taylor at the end of the third round I'm sure a lot of you guys are kind of excited about him I just I, I am definitely nervous about any sort of involvement he has in the passing game and and being in his rookie year I think he definitely shares the workload with Marlon Mack and yes that could happen with Clyde sharing the workload with Damian Williams but he's an electric pass catcher and I think they get him super I, I would be surprised if Clyde doesn't surpass at minimum 55 receptions during his rookie year so Clyde I'm, I'm way 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 more comfortable with than Jonathan Taylor for PPR leagues in in the rookie year that being said if, if you know if I'm in a draft I might actually take Jonathan Taylor here just because the upside is just so great and again, the wide receiver depth going all the way down. Like, I'm just going to scroll all the way down and see what guys I can get later. Like, Juju Smith-Schuster all the way down here. What kind of... This, this is just ridiculous. Sleeper, get, get your shit together. He goes with Cooper Cup. That's a great fucking pick. Great fucking pick. I, I probably would have thought about it. Uh, So, Co people are scared with Cooper now, of course, with CeeDee Lamb there. I still think he's... I mean, he's going to be the alpha at least for this year. Next year... Who knows? The argument could be made. I think DJ Moore is going to be a PPR stud here too. So for me, the question right now is who do I want as my one? Is it Cooper? Is it DJ Moore? I actually, in full PPR, might be leaning more towards DJ Moore here. Let me look at the board a little bit more and see what we have at tight end. Yeah, Zach Ertz, Mark Andrews, now Kittle and Kelsey are both off the board. We saw the first two quarterbacks go off. Lamar Jackson at the 206. Patrick Mahomes around later at the 306. I'm actually going to go with DJ Moore over here because I prefer the consistency that Moore is going to give us. I prefer what we saw over the last half of the year, last 10 games of the year from DJ Moore was nothing short of fucking PPR spectacularness. Mark Cooper, on the other hand, is all over the pl fucking place. And while I do think he remains the alpha there for this year, definitely hurts a little bit to see CeeDee Lamb go there. And he'll probably take over the slot and take a good five targets a game or so. Uh, they do have a lot of vacated targets. I believe they're second most vacated targets in the NFL from last year. Yeah, with Amari Cooper, I just think the ups and downs are going to be a little bit more prevalent this year. So that makes me a bit nervous. Jay Moore is my one. Amari Cooper still sitting there as a two. I think I would be extremely happy with Cooper as my two here, considering that running backs are still on the board. I hate to see Jonathan Taylor continue to slip here because his upside is just so fucking good. I just don't think we see it come to fruition in his rookie year. I really don't. But fuck it, we're gonna go with we're gonna go with Taylor and stack up the uh, and stack up the top two rookie running backs. So I'm gonna grab Jonathan Taylor here, and now I have my three running backs, and I probably won't have to address the position again. So Taylor will obviously play the flex the flex role, which I think is is good. As we're doing more like team building stuff, obviously you're gonna be able to see the trends that I see. The reason I go with a Taylor there is because again we're going to see so 
many wide receiver values later in the drafts, man. Like I already have DJ Moore, and I'm going to be able to get a Terry McLaurin as my wide receiver two or three while having these three stud running backs. This is a real like team building thing that you're going to see throughout the offseason. I want to uh, pull up some DJ Moore numbers. And what I love most about DJ Moore is not only his consistency, but the fact that we got Matt Rule and we got Mr. Brady coming over from LSU. This offense is going to be phenomenal. But DJ Moore, 15 and a half PPR points per game. If you look at look at how they finished, you know, week 16, he got that concussion, he was out. But I mean, dude, 15, 15.6, 8.8. And then after that, it's just a tear. 17, 21, 17 and a half, 31, 19, 12, 20. This is what I expect. Like, look at the target numbers here, man. Teddy Bridgewater, short dink and dumper. They're going to revolve that offense around DJ Moore absolutely killing the yak, the yak squad. Rest in peace to yak because DJ Moore is about to murder it, put him in a coffin. The best part about DJ Moore, what if he just fucks around and scores eight touchdowns this year, right? He, he's doing this without scoring any touchdowns. Two touchdowns the first year, four touchdowns the next year. I am super fucking excited for what DJ Moore is going to bring to the field with Joe Brady as his offensive coordinator. The draft will continue on. Yep, so Cooper went off the board two picks after me. Calvin Ridley, I really, 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 really like. Calvin Ridley was actually another low-key winner of the draft. And I say this because they didn't draft anyone, and I didn't really expect them to, but they have the single most vacated targets on the team right I talked about how Dallas had the most I believe they had 245 or something with Randall Cobb and Jason Witten leaving which was surprisingly much bigger than a lot of people probably realize Calvin Ridley on the Falcons they had even more with Austin Hooper gone Muhammad Sanu gone they were the single highest number of vacated targets going into 2020 and most people don't know this but Ridley was an absolute monster down the stretch last year before he got hurt and I could see him putting up easy top 15 numbers this year so I think he gets very 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 involved in the offense and takes a step up um, in his third year if he could stay healthy he's going to be a huge value there in the fourth round of PPR leagues see Zach Ertz go off at the 4-6 Devin Singletary at the 4-7. As you can see on my tabs up here, I have Michael P. Ryan, Lamical, however you say it, right next to Javorius Allen because they're literally the same fucking player. Please don't draft uh, Lamical P. Ryan in your rookie drafts. I don't care how late he falls. He's the definition of a of a, of a a catch the ball and fall. Catch the ball and fall. Lamical P. Ryan, you're a fraud. Drop an album next summer, this summer, every summer. We're going to drop a Lamical P. Ryan diss track once a year because he's fucking trash. His, his only calling card is going to be this down here. This 40 receptions he had in his senior year. 40 receptions in his senior year. Three. It took him all the way till his senior year. It took him all the way until his fourth year in college to even make a dent in the receiving game. And he did that 6.6 .6 yards per reception, which I already looked. Thanks to Sports Info Solutions. They got us with the advanced analytics for college players. 6.6 .6 yards per reception ranked 147th among NCAA running backs last year you look at his ground efficiency he had one year one year over 5.1 yards per carry his broken tackle rate ranked 90th or worse in all three years in all four years that he was at Florida this guy is so not elusive this guy is so fucking boring he is the reincarnated suck Allen bro I'm telling you please don't draft P Ryan you're going to be highly disappointed draft Joshua Kelly draft DJ Dallas over P Ryan. Okay, so we had Singletary at four seven. Uh, I'm nervous about Singletary, but he's going to catch a lot of balls for sure. Odell, Juju, Tyler Lockett. I really like the Juju at the late fourth round, man. Um, him being back in the slot this year, I think De Deontay Johnson emerged enough to the point where uh, he is a real threat on the outside. And I think they drafted Chase Claypool, right? So it's going to be Chase Claypool and um, James Washington running the other outside, meaning Juju can go back to his natural slot position where he put up 1,400 yards with Big Ben. So if, I, if I'm on one side of whether or not Juju is going to fall back off or come back on, on the ladder, you know, come back onto the throne, Juju, I think, is in for a, a, a real good bounce back this year. Um, so PPR leagues, yeah, I'll definitely be looking at Juju if this is the value he's going to be going in. If he does start creeping up into like the earlier third, mid-third, I probably would suggest going elsewhere, like the Kenny Gallagher here is a fine pick over Juju but I mean Juju all the way down here is just ridiculous value so now you see all the value of wide receivers going off the board where it was stacked right rounds one through three running back running back running back running back running bike running bike turns into wide receiver like that fourth round we've had three running backs out of the 15 picks two tight ends really like that Mark Andrews value here down at five three as well I know the volume isn't there but guys like he's just a, an athletic 
really good tight end in the prime of his career with an MVP quarterback. I don't think there's much to think about. Don't get too caught in the analytics. At the end of the day, you want good football players, good fantasy football players on your team. Don't don't get risky. The earlier on in the draft you are, the less risky you should get. Again, you need those first three or four picks that you make for your team are the core of your team. They're going to be putting up 50 to 60% of your fantasy points weekly. You need to make sure you have that because if you don't, you put yourself at a monster, monster disadvantage. So DJ Chark at the 5-4. I don't know how I feel about DJ Chark in PPR leagues. I'll take some of them. I don't play in any full PPR leagues, though. That's a problem. Not the problem, but that's that's why I don't think about it typically. Like, I don't have, I don't think I have good analysis when it comes to full PPR. Because I always play in half. And once you're in half, it's kind of just the middle ground for both of them, obviously. Just fucking literally mathematically. Um, so I kind of just am like, this is the best player available. And this is who I like. Not based on scoring type. All right. So we're seeing some wide receivers get ripped off. And a lot of the value that I was excited about is coming off quickly. I still think there are some guys that um, I'm excited about. Like, I like Debo Samuel here. I like DK Metcalf here. I would have liked Gallup, but now they took CD. I'm not a fan of that value here. I wouldn't take Christian Kirk this early. I'll have some Marquise Brown shares for sure. Oh, man, they're taking all my wide receivers. Oh, Devontae Parker's still on the board. Give me Devontae. Oh, that's a terrible pick, AJ Green. That's probably the worst pick I've ever seen. Gerald Sheridan. What the fuck your name is? I'm sorry. Please, I hope you didn't watch this video afterwards. That's just mean. I'm sure you're a really good person, but but stick to the the person part of being a human, not the fantasy drafting part. All right. So yeah, my problem with AJ Green is uh is uh yeah. Come on, Parker, fall to me. I guarantee you, Fife fucking snipes me on Parker. I put big money on it. Come on, baby. Big money, big money, big money. All right. For for real though, if we don't get Parker. I'll go with Metcalf probably. Uh, hopefully Metcalf or Devontae Parker will fall to me here late fifth round. There goes Landry. All right, so I'm guaranteed to get one of my guys. Maybe I can get both of them. I kind of like having the end pick so you can kind of go back to back and you can start the runs and stuff like that. Double up and really make a strength a strength. You know what I mean, brothers? I wasn't expecting to record this. I'm sorry. So if, if we're lacking firepower right now, it's, it's just because I suck. Come on, Fife. JT going two rounds before Mac. Don't know how I feel about that. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know how you feel about Mac getting work this year. I love how I just like take shit personally when he says that. Like, I, I'm definitely right and you're a fucking moron. Everyone's dumb except for me. He's probably right. It was probably a bad pick, but we're doing a fucking mock draft and I wanted to have some fun. Fife says this pick is gross. Bro, there's one pick to make here. There's one and only one. It's literally Devontae Parker. You don't do it, Fife? I know you're listening to this afterwards. Hey, oh, ew. Ew! What are you doing? You knew I'm about to shit on you. Give me all the park, daddy. All right. So end of fifth round for David Johnson. Uh, I guess like technically he is a winner from the draft because they didn't take a running back. I don't know if they if they took any running back at all in Houston, but I guess that makes him a winner. I just like I'm I'm just not of the of the type of person that t that likes to draft bad players. I think usually that works itself out. Like. You know, if you're just a bad running back getting getting handed the ball time after time after time after time, like eventually they're just going to turn that into a committee. And that's what I see happening with David Johnson. I don't think he's going to be the workhorse for the entire year. And I'd rather have my fifth round pick be the clear alpha in this offense, right? We don't know when Preston Williams is going to come back. They had 11 picks they could have used on wide receivers. They didn't take one until like the fifth or sixth round. They paid Parker. He's got a really nice, accurate quarterback in Tua coming in. So I uh, love the Parker value all the way down here as my wide receiver too. Now we need to make another pick here and yeah it's going to be Metcalf if he does not take Metcalf Fife said it was between Parker and DJ yeah I think that was the only decision you could have made I haven't even looked at the running backs I like the James Conner at 507 though he was a big winner from the draft as I said I don't hate David Montgomery oh there you go David Montgomery just got sniped from me that was a good pick good pick on uh, David Montgomery uh, I am legend I like that Montgomery is just someone that's going to be completely underrated oh Matt Breda in Miami oh that's calling my name I already have three running backs so I'm probably not going to get cute here with that uh, anything good at tight end? I'll wait on tight end. I think there's a lot of viable options probably, uh, but I'll get, I'll, I'll grab DK. Not a huge fan of, of DK Metcalf overall in terms of like the hype that he's going to get, but compared to Tyler Lockett, but Lockett at the 410, Metcalf at the 6'2", I, I, I thought that those two would have flipped. I thought that Metcalf would start going a lot earlier, but I love the value here between the two picks. I think, I think at the end of the year, I honestly don't think Metcalf's going to take that big of a step up statistically this year. I really don't. But at that being said, like if he takes, you know, 100 or 150 yard step up from last year, you're looking at like a really solid, solid wide receiver, too, that you're getting in the sixth round. So, again, guys, this is what I'm talking about right here. You can get your three like really solid running backs 
you might have a different preference. Like you might've went with Miles Sanders or Josh Jacobs over Clyde. That's fine. Um, you know, and then paired him with someone else as your third running back with your flex play and then still kind of stacked up the wide receivers. We are starting wide receivers, three of them in this league. So we start two running backs, three wide receivers, one flex, a tight end quarterback. So when you are drafting in a league with multiple or uh, three wide receiver spots or more wide receiver spots than running backs, you do have to kind of factor that into um, you have to factor that into everything because you're going to need more depth at the wide receiver position between injuries and buys and things. So the mo- most of my depth will probably go towards the wide receiver position, but from more Parker and Metcalf for being able to fade the position altogether. I love how that worked out for me. Again, it's just, there's just so much value from rounds three through six with the wide receiver group. Um, it, it starts, it definitely starts dropping off a little bit after that, but I still think there's pretty good value at some, uh, for some later round guys. Like if I can get Deontay Johnson on the turnaround here at like, at like the seven eleven or eight Oh eight two, maybe the seven eleven is a little earlier for Deontay, but I still like Anthony Miller. I like, uh, Deontay Johnson. These guys will be gone by the time I pick next tight ends are, I, I originally thought that it was going to be a little bit of a, of a deeper class, um, or a deeper group altogether, but you have like four or five blows this off season that really hurt a lot of the guys that would have been been ranked like six to 12 right you have hooper going to cleveland where they're going to be run heavy and they have tons of weapons there already so he's he's definitely a downgrade from Fal- from atlanta to cleveland you have darren waller who they just added like 17 weapons into the receiving group there you have noah fant who they also just added jerry judy kj hamler albert O. so they added a tons of a ton of mouths there oj howard had rob gronkowski come in it's like man it, it got thin very 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 quickly for the tight end group but i still think there's enough guys between ingram like hooper you know like you don't want him necessarily as your high end as your tight end one because he probably is not going to give you that high end season but he'll, he'll be fine you know producing in that seven to ten range tight end seven to ten Um, Hunter Henry obviously will be fine. I'm definitely not going to be targeting Fant as my starting tight end. I know Goddard finished as like the tight end eight last year or something too, but just like not even being the starting tight end on your own team with Philly adding more weapons makes me a little hesitant to want to have him as my tight end one. Jared Cook, I think, will stick around for another year and be pretty good. Mike Kosicki, I think, is a fine option. Tyler Higbee is a really good low-key option. Jonu Smith takes over the starting role there in Tennessee so I kind of like that I even like Dawson Knox if you get in a pinch um Hayden Hurst is a great fucking PPR option because if you look if you can put up 75 percent of what Austin Hooper did with Atlanta next year and there's no reason that he shouldn't be able to do that Hayden Hurst is going to be a great PPR play I'm, I'm, let's do this let's do a little uh little comparison for you Austin Hooper nope not my oh you remember Miles Austin the fucking goat he went to uh college with my sister or went to the same school at least shout out mama shout out New Jersey shout out the Jersey show shout out snacks speaking of I'm fucking hungry Austin Hooper and Hayden Hurst. Am I on the clock? Nah, right? I still got a while. Yeah, they're chilling. Austin Hooper, Hayden Hurst. Like, there's no difference. I mean, th- there's clearly like a... Hayden Hurst looks like he belongs in a every Netflix series, TV series that was made about Vikings. So size-wise, I mean, they're within one inch and four pounds apart. 40-yard uh, dash, they're within half a tenth of a second. Speed score, Hayden Hurst is better, is faster. Um, around the same bursts, like they're, they're very, 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 very similar in terms of size athleticism. I'm pretty sure that's what the, uh, the Falcons saw. They said, rather than pay, we can just get our guy Hayden Hurst. Obviously we gave up a second rounder, which is like, you know, it's valuable, but whatever. If he, if he ends up being a good player, then I'm fine using the piece on him because Hayden Hurst is a better all around blocker than Hooper is and better all around. But you know, a lot of people are like, why don't they just trade for OJ Howard? OJ Howard is like nothing more than really just like a stretch seam tight end at this point. He hasn't really proven otherwise. And Hayden Hurst is a, is a three down player. Don't forget that he was a first round pick and he's still relatively young. So I, I really like Hayden Hurst here as a late round, uh, as a late round guy to fill in your, your tight end slot. So we're starting to see a couple quarterbacks go off the board. We had Wilson and Prescott seven, one, seven, two. This is a one quarterback league. Um, I think that Kyler, ah, oh, fuck, I was going to say, I doubt Kyler falls to me since there's a little bit of a quarterback run, but that's probably the, uh, the top tier right there, right? You have Jackson, Mahomes, Wilson, Prescott, Murray. You can argue that Deshaun Watson belongs in that tier. I'm a little bit nervous about having D hop there to be honest. Bill O'Brien's about as fucking trustworthy as, and you know what? I'm not going to get into politics. I, I don't know if I trust this Houston offense. I really don't know. Uh, I, I mean, Watson's definitely deserved it to be in that tier, but he's probably the last of that tier that I feel comfortable with. And then there's a monster fall off. So rather than taking another quarterback here, 
I'd rather pair up a couple guys. Like, I'd rather pair up, like, fucking Joe Burrow and, and Drew Brees later on or Joe Burrow and Daniel Jones later on in the draft and continue to take, you know, tight ends and wide receivers and shit. If I had it my way right now, uh, man, Hunter Henry's going to be a tough one to project because we don't have Phillip Rivers there. So it's hard to it's hard to know how much this team is going to even pass the ball. And they do have, you know, Mike Williams, Keenan Allen, Austin Eckler out of the backfield. So I don't expect Henry to get as involved as he did when he had Phillip Rivers under center. Do we see Justin Herbert come in there and immediately take over as the starter? It's very possible, but it's also possible Tyrod plays for the first month or two months. And uh, that obviously limits passing upside. They'll probably run the ball a lot and he will run the ball a lot, which overall just takes away passing volume. So I don't, I don't know how I feel about Hunter Henry. He's probably the one I would take uh, among the guys that are left, but I don't know if I feel strongly. Actually, I, I re- I'm like really, really, really coming on to Higby. So I might wait on tight end. So the problem is I'm not gonna, I don't think I'll get Higby at the 9-11. What do you guys think? You think I'll... You think I should wait on Higby there? I think Higby's in this tier with Hunter Henry. I really do. And if I miss out on them, then it's pretty pretty steep fall off. So I might just make sure I get the starting lineup fixed up and take either Hunter Henry or Higby on my next pick. Let's see if we have any good value left at wide receiver. Eh, not really any guys I absolutely love. Maybe I'll go with the tight end and Deontay Johnson. I really think Johnson's in for like a fucking major breakout this year. I'm going to fade quarterback for now. Running backs, I really like Kareem Hunt all the way down here as well. I, I, you know, I made this argument in my videos this week when we were talking about the running backs, but I don't see Kareem Hunt in a much different role than I see J.K. Dobbins in or DeAndre Swift in this year because they're all playing secondary. They're all playing second fiddle, but they're all going to get decent passing work, and they're all explosive, young, very good running backs that have the potential to carve out more work. I think Hunt has the lowest ceiling of the three because he does not have he does not have the potential to take over as like the starter and actually become the guy in that backfield, right? Like Nick Chubb will never be phased out of the running game there, whereas Swift can definitely overtake Carrion Johnson and Dobbins can overtake, which I think is unlikely, but he could definitely overtake, you know, the 30-year-old Mark Ingram. I think they're all going to be running back by committees, but I would take whoever's last of the three. So I guess me saying that there's no point in taking Kareem Hunt right now, if I could get one of those other rookies, I might just end up going all rookies, huh? I also think Raheem Mostert probably makes sense around here, though I have I have absolutely no faith that Raheem Mostert remains like the guy. They're, they're going to use a, a committee week in, week out that you're never going to be able to predict. Mostert might be the guy for like three weeks, but he won't be the guy for three months. If I can quote that, put that on a t-shirt. I am working and have a three-month-old. Then don't commit to a damn mock draft that that your life is on the line for. Hella money going back and forth in this mock draft. And you're going to come out here and pick fucking... And pick fucking... Uh, Devontae Freeman? I'm going to tweet this link out right now so you guys can see the board. Game over. <laughs> Marvin Jones. That's Fife's boy. Terrible pick. Way too early. Marvin Jones is broken down. He done. He finished. Uh, did I have a wide receiver in mind? I forget. Like I start talking and then I forget what I was saying. Yeah, I'll go with the I'll go with the tight end here. Man, do I go with Henry? Do I go with Hooper? Higby was so damn good. They got rid of Cooks. They want to run that two tight end set, and they're talking about how much of a piece of that offense he is. Yeah, let's do it. Fuck it, Hig boy. We're going Higby there with Hooper left on the board, with Hunter Henry left on the board. Let's fucking go. And then we're gonna run it back with. We're gonna go with Deontay Johnson. I really feel like I could probably get him. At the 9-11. Yeah, you know what? If Kareem Hunt is here, actually, I'm, I'm going to go against everything I've been talking about and get Kareem Hunt if he drops to me here and then hope Deontay Johnson drops to me at the 9-11 and I'm going to be fucking pissed if he does not. I'm taking names, I'm chopping heads. So you see Austin Hooper went off the board right after me. If he goes with Kareem Hunt here, I'm going to go with Hunter Henry, actually. Higby, I, I hate doing things based off small sample size. I really, really do. But it seemed like last year, it was just every time you were like, ah, oh, he can't do it again. Ah, oh, he can't do it again. Ah, oh, he can't do it again. It was just like week in, week out. Higby, 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 Higby. And I, th- I just think letting go of Cooks tells you that that's going to be their plan going forward. They realize what they did for so long that worked so well is not going to work anymore for them. And their offensive line can't block. So that's probably another reason why they started switching more to two tight end sets to get a couple extra blockers in there. So McVay, for as much shit as he's gotten over the last, you know, it's become popular to say Sean McVay is a bad fucking coach, which is a, which is a horrible to take altogether. I think he's been he's done really well adapting to what he has here. So I'm gonna go with Kareem Hunt here, and I'm gonna share this board if I can somehow. Let's see, share draft board. There we go. Link copied. Let's go to the twatter. Okay, back to your regularly 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 is one of the toughest 
words in the English language to say regularly regularly so after hunt we had tom brady we're starting to see the quarterbacks go off raheem oster john brown i'm really surprised that uh that it wasn't adam that took john brown there marvin Jones. adam just i feel like adam just drafts the same guys on his team for the last four years like every fantasy team he's probably ever had consisted of marvin jones john brown and david johnson and he's probably so mad that josh allen went off the board before and Devin Singletary. If he could have an all Buffalo team, I bet he would. Devin Singletary, Zach Moss, Josh Allen, Stefan Diggs, John Brown, Robert. Yo, Robert Foster's coming back, I heard. I actually really liked Robert Foster at one point. Can't believe they just let him pass away. It's fucking so rude. Okay, so yeah, back with a Kareem Hunt. I mean, he finished very strong, guys. And again, it's not mutually exclusive, like one or the other. I think Chubb and Hunt can both succeed very well and you have the fancy coming over and this is a stat I'll reference pretty often, I think, this summer. The Minnesota running backs led the NFL last year in receiving yards via the screen game. I think Hunt and Chubb are both going to see plenty of uh, screen action, which is great because if the volume is not high, that's a that's a great way for running backs to uh, break away long runs, right? You see a lot of the screen plays like a similar like a Derrick Henry. That's what I could see Nick Chubb kind of getting into this year, you know, breaking a couple of those, you know, a couple good blocking lanes and he gone, he gone. So you're starting to see the tight end run. So so basically the overall trend we're seeing so far, running backs very heavy. Then you get into around the late round three, and then rounds four and five and six are dominated by wide receivers. Uh, you start getting into the tight end and quarterback range, probably around six, seven in one quarterback leagues. That sounds about right. So plan accordingly, grab your running backs, smash the wide receivers in the middle, grab, grab an okay tight end, grab an okay quarterback, and you will be fine. I believe this is 15 rounds. This shit is going to take forever, huh? This is going to be like a 200-minute video. Fuck you, Snacks. Look at this fucking piece of shit tweet right here. What's one bet or run you'd relive if you could? Any sports. Snacks really bet $100 on New England down 21-0, 28-3, 20. Fuck you. Fuck you. I don't I don't even believe him. Look at all these. I hate. How do you hate the Parker pick at 5-11 in a full PPR league? Like, that's just the dumbest fucking comment I'll hear all day. People getting erections over Clyde, going to burn so many. Yeah, I mean, in full PPR, I think he's gonna burn a lot of people and those are the people that are fucking playing against them my friend i feel like i was gonna say something useful to you guys then i forgot what else is fucking new a bunch of these old running backs go off we had ronald jones at 87 carry on 88 damian williams 812 sony michelle 93 and then dobbins the young stud at 94 damian's a handcuff he'd be someone maybe i would target in the ninth or tenth round is deontay johnson still on the board let's go two more picks and i get my boy dj i have a feeling fight's gonna steal him from me this is big snipe snipe city coming up right now this is fucking playing gta posting up on a roof of a of a huge building and sniping people fife's got the playstation turned on he sees me walking down the street in a fucking pink suit and he's like i'm gonna kill that guy wait on it don't do it don't do it i really like anthony miller man i'm gonna i'm gonna be i'm gonna own so much miller I think this is like the kind of the perfect storm for him. He's finally, we saw, we saw him come on at the end of last year, start playing really well, and now we get an upgrade at the quarterback position from a passing perspective, which I think means more targets, more accurate targets to the runners. Yeah! Yeah! Give me all the Deontay, baby. Couldn't click fucking draft fast enough on Deontay. He will be my 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th round target in every draft. I assume that he's going to start creeping up a little bit. But, dude, I, I could not have higher expectations for Deontay Johnson. I don't have a quarterback yet, which is fine. Because, I mean, look, I waited all this time and I could still get Carson Wentz, Matt Ryan. I'll probably go with Matt Ryan here. He's going to put up his 4,600 passing yards or whatever. They got Dirk Cutter there, so you know they're not running the damn ball. We're on the damn ball. Noah Fant. I don't know. I don't know how you can trust Noah Fant this year. There's just not going to be enough volume to go around to to him. He's just not good enough to command targets over Sutton and Judy. I don't hate Coleman at the 10-1 because everyone's going to get really excited about Moser, and they already came out and said it's going to be a committee between Coleman and Moser, and I like, wouldn't be surprised if Coleman has games where he's touching the ball 15-plus times. So I'm going to go with Ryan here. I know a lot of people probably like Wentz, but I still am not sure I feel good about his surrounding cast. And, and he's got the injury concern, which is not really a big deal because you could always pick a quarterback up off the wire, but you're not going to get one like Matt Ryan. So I'll just take the stable piece of offense there and uh, get my, my 46 and 30 from Matt, from Matty boy. So we're 10 rounds in. This is the roster for me. If you could see it on the bottom right. Yeah, you can. Cool. So we have Matt Ryan as the quarterback. We have Derrick Henry, Clyde Edwards-Hilaire, Jonathan Taylor, Kareem Hunt as the running backs. 
Um, and again, this is full PPR. So I know that's a, that's a very odd mixture of guys there, but I think between two of them, we'll get two stud running backs. Wide receiver, DJ Moore, Devontae Parker, DK Metcalf, and Deontay Johnson. Love those guys for full PPR, especially DJ Moore and Devontae Parker. We have Tyler Higby as our starting tight end, which is probably a little risque, but I didn't think there was any better options on the board. I mean, Hooper's not going to get a ton of volume. He'll probably get five targets a game. Hunter Henry, I, I, you're going to get five targets a game from fucking an erratic quarterback. So uh, I, I think I like Higby a little bit more than those other guys. So I, I like the value I had at Higby. I'll probably do the next two picks for you guys and then sign off because this bad boy is going to run up to be over an hour long already. Also, while we're here, might as well uh, take a second to... Nope, nope, you guys can't see that. I just finished the write-up for my favorite late round running back targets in rookie drafts. So we got exclusive articles and videos starting to get pumped out into the Dynasty Guide. We obviously had to wait until the draft was over and wait to get some ADP data, but I promise they are coming. We have the top five running backs for next year, top five wide receivers for next year. We're working on late round targets for running backs and wide receivers. We got the Dynasty Bible coming out soon, the Startup Bible. If you all cop the guide last year, you know that I go in-depth on that Bible, baby. We break down position by position by position. We only did it for the season-long drafts last year, but this year we are doing it for the startup drafts. And and if you want to join some of the Big Dogs Dynasty leagues, all you got to do is join us on Discord. It is completely free. We have started a Discord channel for the Big Dogs, and I think we're over like 1,300 people now. Just a big community of fucking assholes, which is what my audience is made up of. We got people joining like every fucking eight minutes. It's so cool, man. The channel's on the left side of anything that you want to possibly talk about. And of course, there are leagues starting in here. They're paid dynasty startup leagues. Look how many we got already. $200 buy-in. We got a Debbie League going already. Damn, I'm not even taking care of this. Noah's got all this going. So we have 20 leagues already. Free, $50 buy-in, $100 buy-ins. We have a five. The Filet the Public is a is a $500 buy-in. So whatever you're looking for, you got leagues to start up in there. And then you can do trade talks. We're talking stonks, waiver wire, roster feedback, trade review. So uh, I will take this right now. Invite people, copy. I will link this in the description of this YouTube video, as well as the top commented, whatever, 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 whatever. So go cop the Big Dogs Draft Guide as well. We've got a ton of exclusive stuff going on. We've got mock drafts. We've got all the rookie outlook write-ups. We've got so much beautiful shit. BigDogsDraftGuide.com. Um, if you are eligible to play on Monkey Knife Fight, you can get both of these guys, the season long and the redraft or the dynasty for ten dollars all you got to do is deposit on monkey knife fight using promo code bdge you'll get that to play with plus all that nonsense so big dogs draft let's go back to the draft board okay so we had zach moss i like that zach moss pick at 10 i think he's a sneaky bet to go like 800 and, and seven or eight slayton judy sanders preston williams jordan howard henry ruggs justin jefferson jefferson okay so i wish you could like x players out you know you could do like the q here i wish i could just x out brown freeman miller so they're out of my fucking face I'm starting to like Harry as a as a late round guy as well. If they bring in like Cam Newton, he becomes a favorite target there, I think. Um, and they didn't draft any wide receivers, which tells you that they at least feel comfortable with Harry there. And they at least feel comfortable giving him a ton of work this year, right? And uh, he was one of the prospects that was... I mean, don't forget like how good of a prospect Harry was. Breakout age, versatility, uh, monster production in college... He, uh, athletics were just off the board in terms of size and speed and burst and like everything was there for him. Um, but first year didn't pan out. I mean, that's what happens when you get hurt in the summer of your rookie year. Like you don't have the time to get acclimated with the team and you don't, you, know, you just start off slow and shit gets kind of messed up. So I'm willing to write that off. So I'll take Harry as a late round guy this year for sure. I'm not looking at any of these guys all trash. I don't hate golden Tate too. I feel like he was a fucking baller for the giants last year. Uh, low key, he played really well when he got back from suspension. So don't hate that. I really like Anthony Miller, so I will be targeting him with my next pick if he is there. So we're seeing a lot of the rookie wide receivers start to go off the board. We just had Ruggs, Jefferson, and C.D. Lamb all go off in the 11th. We had Rager go off at the end of the ninth round. I don't think we had anyone go before him. I would say in terms of redraft rankings, if I'm doing the rookies, it's really close between C.D. and Jalen Rager. I really might take C. It might be kind of ignorant just given that Rager kind of fits into a, an immediate role there and CD might be more of like the slot receiver and he might take halfway through the season to get like a full-time role but I, I just think Lamb is so electric and it's going to be such a good offense that I kind of like the upside that he brings or at least the floor 
Um, so Rager and CD are definitely the closest for me in terms of redraft wide receivers. Judy, I'm, I'm not going to be buying in redraft. Jefferson makes a good argument because he probably slides in as a wide receiver too. I am, I am a little bit nervous about Jefferson's separation skills if they don't have him. I think he's very dependent on playing in the slot. And if they don't use him in the slot or they use a lot of two tight end sets, which don't use a slot, um, or Adam Thielen, there's a lot of outs in which he is not running primarily out of the slot. And that I believe would be a, a problem for him at the NFL level. So Jefferson, I'm, I'm I think I'm okay missing the boat on Jefferson. And if I'm wrong, whatever, I'll get it wrong. And, uh, and we'll fucking move on and we'll trade for him or some shit. But Jefferson's probably a guy that I'm okay, that I'm okay getting past. So there, yeah, I mean, CD and, and, uh, CD and Rager are probably the only two rookie wide receivers that I really think are worth investing in, given just the talent, the situation and the possible opportunity that they'll get in their rookie year. Let me know. Are, are there any other guys that you guys love for redraft this year? Like, I, I think you can make a case for like Denzel Mims as the one there in new york but it's still adam gase it's still like a bad offense um the volume might be there so ppr leagues i don't i don't really hate it but same thing could be said for henry ruggs i mean they do draft him 12th overall but they got a lot of people there in that offense and we don't have like a real quarterback you know first and foremost you, just, you need a quarterback that's going to deliver you the ball and that makes me nervous at least like if you have a quarterback like ryan fitzpatrick and he's just zoning in on a guy like Devontae Parker, the volume will be there at worst, you know? But I don't I, I don't know if I could say the same for Henry Henry Rugg. Daniel Jones going off the board as let's see, one, two, quarterback twelve. Interesting. Who else is still on the board? Raquel Armstead. That's a very interesting pick. Wow, he went uh <laughs> so Ryan Pack just completely Rin Pack, I don't know how you say that. Completely faded running backs until the seventh round. He ended up with Geis, Raheem Mostert. DeAndre Swift, Tariq Cohen, Raquel Armstead. I'll be honest, bro. I actually, I don't hate how that zero RB team worked out. I don't necessarily love the wide receivers he picked. Um, but I think there's a lot of upside in the running backs that he took. All right. So your boy, he's on the clock. Uh, is Anthony Miller still left? I believe he is. So I'm going to grab my man, Anthony Miller. I'll make one more pick after this, and then we will say our depressing goodbyes and then hopefully you guys will hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this or and or subscribe to the channel if you uh if you've never stumbled upon my nonsense before do 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 i like hate every running back left i like some of the wide receivers i think i i might this is probably when i'll double down on a tight end for goddard i'll, I'll probably double down on, i'll probably take goddard here because you know i can go with a guy like john smith or something where i'm hoping for production off the rip but with Tyler Higby, I don't think I'm going to need another starter in place. So Goddard kind of gives you that. Goddard's almost like a handcuff in a sense. Like maybe he does overtake Zach Ertz for the for the primary tight end spot there, which I highly doubt happens while Ertz is there. But if Ertz does get hurt, then Goddard has, you know, like elite top three kind of fantasy tight end upside. So having him on the bench, I don't think is the worst thing, considering you're not going to be able to, st whatever other tight end you have on your bench behind Higby, you're not going to be able to start. So you might as well just grab one of them with, very very high upside and see what happens so i'll be targeting goddard here if i can get him if this guy ever makes his pick here we go here's a full board for y'all side of my annoying ass face let me minimize this real quick actually i'll just throw you down that does not solve a single fucking problem Skirt. i've been hiding the big dogs logo the whole time i wonder if i'll ever get good at this whole podcasting thing probably not hey we're closing in on 10k closing in on 10k followers people if you're not following me on twitter I would suggest continuing to not follow me, to be honest. But it'd be cool if you did, though. If you got a Twitter and you haven't followed me yet, this is my name, at Nick underscore B-D-G-E. That stands for Big Dogs Gotta Eat, in case you didn't know. Someone make a damn pick. Like, can we go? Let's go. I'm getting angry. You don't want you don't want me angry because then the volume on my mic gets loud and it fucking annoys everybody. I'll throw the LOL at the end to be hella passive aggressive because I have no idea who the fuck that is. But I hope he barks at me. He's wrote seven messages, but can't can't tell us who he wants or make a pick. Ed, good. You and Didi deserve each other, honestly. Uh, okay, good pick with Nikhil Harry. So right now I debate between Golden Tate and uh, Dallas Goddard. I'll probably go with Goddard in case Higby ends up being a fluke, even though Tate's a pretty good pick in, in PPR leagues because if you look at what he did last year, yeah, you all are going to have to fucking wait now. I mean, for the games that he was in, look at down the stretch. Like, plenty of really good games here. 6 for 102, 6 for 80, 6 for 85, 6 for 42, 4 for 95 and 2. A couple of dud games here with touchdowns in them, though. 6 for 96, 5 for 68. Like, he was low-key, like, very, very good in PPR leagues. So I might have talked myself into Goddard, but nope. 
we're finna go with Golden Tate because this is a three wide receiver, uh, three wide receiver set, three wide receiver fucking starting lineup, lineup. All right, clearly I can't do this podcasting thing anymore for today. I'm done. My energy is cooked. Uh, I love y'all. Uh, so I, I hope that you guys got some information or value from this. If you did, make sure you hit that thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you are new. If you're on the podcast, uh, a rating and review would be cool or just subscribing to the thing. I really don't even know how iTunes works, to be honest with you. I don't know what kind of fucking bullshit algorithm and formula they got cooking up over there. Whatever it is, is terrible and it needs to be changed. But regardless, I think doing those things might help me. Rating, review, subscribe, all the fucking nonsense that everyone says at the end of their videos. I love you guys. I'll see you. Uh, I'll see you next time. Bye.